Hello there. Lecture series 14 of Bite Size Corporate Reporting is on IAS 8 Accounting Policies, Changes in Accounting Estimates and Errors. This is a two part lecture series. The objective of IAS 8 is to prescribe the criteria for selecting and changing accounting policies as well as the accounting treatment and disclosure of changes in accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates, and correction of errors. IAS 8 defines accounting policies and accounting estimates as follows. Accounting policies are the specific principles, bases, conventions, rules and practices applied by an entity in preparing and presenting financial statements. Accounting estimates are monetary amounts in the financial statements that are subject to measurement uncertainty. This is due to accounting policies that may require items to be measured at monetary amounts that cannot be observed directly and therefore must be estimated instead. How do we decide on the choice of accounting policies? In selecting accounting policies, management should apply the relevant IFRS taking into consideration any implementation guidance issued by the IASB relating to the relevant IFRS. However, it is possible for events, transactions or conditions not to be covered by an IFRS. In such cases, management should use its judgment in developing and applying an accounting policy that results in information that is relevant and faithfully represents the transaction. When exercising judgment in the absence of relevant IFRS, management shall refer to 1 requirements and guidance in IFRS dealing with similar and related issues. 2. The definition, recognition criteria and measurement principles in the conceptual framework of financial reporting. In addition, management may also consider the most recent procurement of other standard setting bodies that use similar conceptual framework and other accepted industry practices provided it's not in conflict with IFRS and the conceptual framework. It is important for an entity to select and apply its accounting policies consistently for similar transactions to ensure comparability of information. Therefore, an entity shall change an accounting policy only if the change, one, is required by an IFRS, or two, results in the financial statements providing reliable and more relevant information about the effect of the transaction on the entity's financial position, performance or cash flows. An entity shall account for a change in accounting policy resulting from initial application of an IFRS in accordance with specific transitional provision, if any, in that IFRS. However, in the absence of specific transitional provision on initial application of an IFRS or an entity changes an accounting policy voluntarily, it shall apply the change retrospectively. In such cases, the entity shall adjust the opening balance of each affected component of equity for the earliest prior period presented and other comparative amounts disclosed for each prior period presented as if the new accounting policy has always been applied. The second part of Lecture Series 14 on IAS 8 will look at accounting estimates and errors. Till then, thank you and have a nice day.